for a nice quiet campground. So, hey, dude, which way to Heritage USA? Yeah, like I heard they got like a water park, water slides, everything to hold in. <laughs> Gnarly, dude, so which way? Really? <laughs> Yo, partner, which way to Heritage USA? We're looking for the Heritage Grand Hotel. Little Philly rope me and finally tie the knot. Back. We heard the honeymoon suites were so romantic. No matter where you're from or what you like to do, if you're looking for fun, excitement, or just relaxation, ask somebody how to get to Heritage USA. Heritage USA? Today is going to be a very, very special program. Doug Oldham is here, Ron Aldrich, the PTL singers, Sam Johnson, the pastor of Heritage Church. And today we have some exciting news about what happened yesterday as we're attempting to find new partners for this ministry, it, it, it's fantastic what happened. But before we go into all of that good stuff, we have something legal that we need to communicate with you. Frank Gamble is standing by. This is by order of the federal court for Heritage Village and this ministry is in Chapter 11. Frank Gamble will say something to you. We'll come back and make a comment as well. Frank Gamble. This is an important legal announcement for all the PTL lifetime partners. Each of you should take a pen and a piece of paper and write down this important information. On July 6, 1987, Judge Rufus W. Reynolds ordered that this information be broadcast on the PTL program. Judge Reynolds is the bankruptcy judge who will be presiding over the PTL Chapter 11 case. On Wednesday, July 22, 1987 at 9 a.m., a meeting will take place at the Jefferson Square Theater in Columbia, South Carolina. The Jefferson Square Theater is located at 1801 Main Street. At this meeting, one of PTL's officers will be available to answer questions by PTL's creditors, their attorneys, and other persons having legal interest in PTL's case. While lifetime partners may attend the meeting, failure to attend will not affect any rights the lifetime partners may have. PTL has taken the position that lifetime partners have no legally recognized interest in PTL's property and no right to receive money from PTL. Any lifetime partner who wishes to make a claim against PTL must file an initial claim form on or before November 1st, 1987. The claim form should state the following. Number one, the lifetime partner's name, mailing address, and telephone number. Two, the amount contributed to PTL as a lifetime partner. Three, the dates or dates of the contributions. And number four, the specific rights the lifetime partner claims to have. The form shall state that it relates to the PTL case number 87-0. 956 and it shall be signed by the lifetime partner under oath under penalty of perjury claims are to be filed by mailing them to the following address PTL claims clerk PO box 168 Columbia South Carolina 29202 claims must be received by November 1st 1987 if you would like the court to send you a blank claim form write the PTL claims clerk at the address on the screen and send a stamp self address envelope Judge Reynolds will be organizing a special committee composed only of lifetime partners. If you would like to be on the lifetime partners committee, you should write the clerk of the U.S. Bankruptcy Court at the following address. Clerk of Court, attention PTL case, P.O. Box 1448, Columbia, South Carolina, 29202. Your letter should provide the following information, your name, your mailing address, the amounts contributed as a lifetime partner, and the dates of the contributions. Your letter must be received by the clerk on or before July 20th, 1987. If you seek to be on the committee, you will be expected to attend an organizational meeting to be held in Columbia on a later date. This announcement will be repeated on the PTL program through Monday, July 20th. Thank you, Frank. And what you've just heard sounds, I'm sure, like a lot, a lot of legal semantics to you. And in fact, it is that. But I want to you just to look in and watch in as I go out with our live audience here today at the PTL show as we try to communicate what you just heard really, really means. Good morning. Good morning. You've just been listening to something that I know bores you, but it is necessary. And yesterday, after we went off the air, I took the time to come out and tell you what the Frank Gamble announcement from the federal court means 
And some people said, hey, why don't you do that with a television audience? It's a sensitive thing, but I never have been afraid of sensitive things. And so I thought I would take just a few moments before we go into the positive side of our program to share with you what Frank was just saying. Most of you know that, there, that we are in Chapter 11 filing with a federal court seeking their protection and assistance in solving what have been some very insoluble problems for us here. One, we have about a $72 million indebtedness that is manageable and workable, and we're committed to paying it. We just can't pay it all at one time. Uh, secondly, we have, a, we have a major problem with partnerships. We have sold, as best we can determine, somewhere between $100 million and $180 million worth of those partnerships. That $100 to $180 million was called a lifetime partnership and was intended to be a contribution to the ministry for which the ministry, again as a contribution, a gift, provided four days and three nights in the Heritage Grand. And if, the tower, if and when the towers are finished and we're committed to doing that, uh, the same thing there. The problem is that we have oversold by 325%. That is, we have 3.25 families waiting per room per night forever. And that's what the towers finished. It's like 600% without the towers. And by God's grace, we plan to finish the towers, but they're not finished now. Now, what I've just said to you is a mathematical impossibility. It doesn't work. And so we needed someone more powerful than we to define and describe for us what really exists because there are some persons who believe they were not making a contribution for a lifetime membership, but they were rather buying a timeshare. Now, there's a big difference. If there are $180 million in timeshares purchased, then there's $180 million of indebtedness for this ministry on top of the $70 million I just mentioned. And clearly, that's the end of the ministry, as far as I could determine. Uh, I don't know how we would repay that. Most of the partners we deal with don't believe they own the ministry. They believe they have contributed to it, gave it to the Lord, and feel that this came from my heart to God's heart, and I'm trusting the ministry now to do for us what is ethical and morally right and so forth. And our desire is, I, I'm sorry, sir. This is a church service, sir. Thank you. We have a few like that. We have a few here. We have one or two like that here. But thank God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> thank you for your support. Amen. Amen. Can you feel the lateness of the hour? And can you see the battle going on? Well, just don't give up when you stumble. Soldiers lose their way. Just tune your ear to always hear when the trumpet sounds. We're not giving up no ground. People all around us have opinions lately. Offering advice they think is wise But we know there's a difference In what's right from wrong So hold tightly to the truth that you've already found We're not giving up no ground I said no Sing it with me We're giving up no ground We got a cause worth fighting for Never we're not gonna take no Thank you. Now, Derek, God bless you. Derek did, I know you are, Derek did that to give the brother time 
to vent his spleen and leave. But let me say to all of you, most of the partners, and we've heard from most of them, believe they were giving to the Lord and believe that we're going to do what's right with them. Amen.